What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are discussing one of my favorite topics heading into the upcoming fantasy hockey season and that topic is sleepers. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know what sleeper means, but just to define it for you, a sleeper is a player that is going far later in drafts than I think they should go. The players I'm about to tell you to target in drafts are a mix of bounce back players, breakout players, players with upside, and guys that have insane value at their current ADP. With that being said, guys, let's start talking about these massive sleepers. Just before we talk about these players, I quickly want to tell you guys, I'm going to be doing a live stream tonight, and I'm going to be doing more best ball drafts on Drafters Fantasy Sports. You guys can draft alongside with me. It's available in all of Canada, including Ontario, most U.S. states, and you can use my promo code Fired Up for 100% match deposit. I'm attempting to win $10,000, which is the top prize for this contest, and you guys could potentially win that too. These drafts are extremely fun, guys, and if you want a chance to win that type of money in fantasy hockey, you might as well use my promo code and get that free bonus money. With that being said, guys, I hope to see you in that live stream tonight. Feel free to check it out. The first player is not an official player on this list, but the reason I have to talk about him first is because this guy could be a league winner. This player is Valerie Nachushkin of the Colorado Avalanche. Now listen, I understand that Nachushkin was suspended in the playoffs, and this is now back-to-back -back seasons where his season was cut short due to his own fault. The thing is, though, Nachushkin is clear to play middle of November, and Joe Sackick was asked about this just recently. Sackick said himself, Nachushkin should be cleared to play, what, mid-November? So we're expecting him to be back mid-November. In my opinion, very soon after he is cleared, he will be back in the lineup. And if we look at the last couple of seasons for Valerie Nachushkin, he has been a beast. In 21-22, he was on pace for 33 goals and a total of 68 points. In 22-23, he was on pace for 26 goals and a total of 72 points. And then last season in 23-24, he was on pace for 42 goals and a total of 80 points. His current Yahoo ADP is 165.8. So you're getting him very late in your upcoming drafts. It's gonna depend on your league, but I'm pretty sure if you have an IR plus spot, you can put Nachushkin on there. And when he comes back, he could absolutely pay off at this ADP. It's a low risk, high reward situation. So if you have IR plus, I would suggest drafting Nachushkin if he falls this far. Now, moving on to the official sleeper list, we're talking about forwards first. And the first player that we are talking about is Michael Bunting of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Bunting's current ADP on Yahoo was 184.0. And I think this is far too late. The reason for this is very simple. Last season, he got traded to the Penguins. And in the 21 games that he played with the Penguins, he averaged the most ice time per game of his entire NHL career. On the Penguins, he assumed a top six role and he was a staple on the first line power play as well. In the 21 games that he played on the Penguins, he averaged 17 minutes and 19 seconds of ice time per game, which was more than a two minute increase going from the Canes to the Penguins. With this improvement in deployment, we saw in these 21 games, Bunting put up 19 points. This is a very small sample size, so yes, I will take it with a grain of salt, but the fact is that this production was very impressive, and I think his fantasy outlook is much better on the Penguins than it was on the Hurricanes. Now listen, I want to say that I'm not expecting Bunting to have this monster season in fantasy, but if we're looking at his range of outcomes given the deployment that he has, there's a chance that he could put up 60 to 65 points. Ultimately, there is a chance he's playing even strength with Crosby, but even if he's not, he'll still be solid, and it seems like his role on the man advantage is pretty secure, so where Bunting is going ADP wise, I think he's a massive steal. The next forward I think is a sleeper for this upcoming fantasy hockey season is Adam Fantilli of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Last year, his season was cut short due to injury, but in the 49 games that he played in, he put up 12 goals and 15 assists for a total of 27 points. This was an 82 game pace of 20 goals and a total of 45 points, despite only averaging 15 minutes and 43 seconds of ice time per game. I also want to mention that of the 27 points that he had in 49 games last year, only three came from the man advantage. The fact is that Fantilli is going to be relied on heavily for this upcoming season, and there's a good chance he sees a huge bump in deployment. You also have a new head coach as well in Dean Evison, who may improve the deployment of Fantilli as well. There is untapped upside with Fantilli, and if you watch some of the games last year, he looked fantastic, so there is a chance that he could have a really good season. Fantilli has the exact same ADP as Bunting on Yahoo, that ADP being 184. Depending on your league size, you may be able to steal Fantilli in the last round of your draft, and I think that's massive value. The last thing I want to mention is that Fantilli puts up really solid peripherals last year, pacing for almost 200 shots and also pacing for over 100 hits. In conclusion, guys, his ADP on Yahoo is way too low. He could be a really good late round value. So I suggest you draft him. The next sleeper on this list is Jake DeBrusque of the Vancouver Canucks. The case for DeBrusque to be a sleeper in your upcoming drafts is very simple. His advanced stats suggest to me that he may have been getting unlucky last year, especially in the goal department. And now he is going to a team where he could see improved deployment. On the Bruins last year, he only averaged a minute and 40 seconds of power play time per game. But there is a chance that on the Canucks, 
He's on the first power play unit. The fact is that the Canucks have been looking to fill that bumper role ever since Bo Horvat was traded, and DeBrus could be that guy. We have to remember that DeBrus had 27 goals in 64 games just two seasons ago, which was a 34 goal pace. He's only 27 years old. There's not a lot of competition on the left wing on the Canucks, and he's also a guy that puts up really good shots, hits, and blocks as well. So, with all that being considered, yes. DeBrusque could be a massive sleeper in your upcoming drafts. The one last thing I wanted to say is that DeBrusque has dual eligibility on Yahoo currently. He has left wing and right wing, and that can be very advantageous. So take that into consideration for your upcoming drafts. The next sleeper I want to talk about is JJ Baterka of the Buffalo Sabres. Baterka's current ADP on Yahoo is 164.3. And let me tell you why this is fantastic value. The reason is pretty simple. Baterka last season had a breakout year, putting up 28 goals and a total of 50 points. In 82 games. Now, this may not be the most impressive production, but only three of these 28 goals came from the man advantage, and of his 50 points, only a total of seven points came from the man advantage. Paterka was not on the first line power play until the end of last season, so the fact is, there is massive upside for this upcoming year. Now, yes, we do have new coaching staff. We don't know what they want to do with the lines or the man advantage. But we do know last year that he found chemistry on the top line with Tage Thompson, and he became a staple on the first line power play as well. Ultimately, based off the roster and the lines that I expect, I think there's a very good chance that he's on the first line, even strength, and on the first unit once again. In conclusion, guys, there's a lot of upside and you're drafting him at a very good price currently. So in my opinion, you should target JJ Baterka in your upcoming drafts. The next sleeper on this list is Dylan Cousins of the Buffalo Sabres. Currently on Yahoo, Cousins ADP is 176.3 and that is far too late. This is a player that is only two years removed from putting up 31 goals and a total of 68 points in 81 games. That season was also a year where he only averaged 16 minutes and 30 seconds of ice time per game and only had 18 power play points. That production as a 20 two-year-old was extremely impressive, but obviously last year was not as good. Yes, this was a bad season for Cousins, but in my opinion, he is due to bounce back. There's a couple of reasons why I think he's going to bounce back, starting with his advanced stats. His shooting percentage was only 9%. It was down low compared to his career average. His honest shooting percentage was down compared to the last three years. And his 5v5 IPP was down as well. Not only do his advanced stats signal to me that he's going to bounce back, but we also have to remember that last season was a terrible year, not just for Cousins, but for all the Sabres players. The Sabres went from the ninth best power play in 22-23 to the third worst power play in 23-24. There is only room for growth here, and we have a new head coach and assistant coach who should be good on special teams. Another reason I'm expecting Cousins to bounce back is that last season, he was not on the first line power play. Because of this, he only had 10 power play points in 79 games, which is obviously not good for fantasy. With that being said, the bounce back case for Cousins is he gets back on this first unit. Yes, there is some risk that Jack Quinn is on the first unit over Cousins, and there's also some risk that they run distributed usage for both units. Obviously, we're gonna learn more in camp, but in my opinion, if I was projecting the first line power play today, Cousins would be on it. I just think Cousins is too talented not to get significant power play time. So I'm betting on him to get back on this first unit and put up 60 plus points. The other reasons I like Cousins is because this season, he should have a full 82 games with Jack Quinn on his line. And that's obviously gonna be a big boost. To sum everything up, guys, Cousins is only 23 years old. He's shown a lot of promise in his young NHL career, and I'm expecting him to bounce back and the Sabres team to bounce back as a whole. The next sleeper on this list is Jared McCann of the Seattle Kraken. If you're looking on Yahoo here, you can see that McCann has dual eligibility, which is definitely a plus. And his current ADP is 147. This isn't the biggest deal, but I think this is pretty good value considering what McCann can bring to the table. McCann is the best player on the Kraken playing on the first line in the first line power play, and he has been very solid in the last two seasons. You can see in 22-23, he had 40 goals and a total of 70 points in 79 games. Last season, he had 29 goals and a total of 62 points in 80 games. These are solid numbers, but unfortunately, McCann's ceiling has been capped because the Kraken have run a very balanced offense. You can see this with McCann's ice time, 16 minutes and 20 seconds in 22-23 and 16 minutes and 46 seconds in 23-24. The fact that he's putting this type of production up despite limited minutes is very impressive, and there is a chance this year with the new head coach that things could change. I'm not saying it will, guys, because if you look at their roster, there's a chance that they spread around the offense once again, but a new head coach brings in new questions, so there is a chance that maybe McCann could get more ice time for this upcoming year. In conclusion, guys, there is that upside with McCann, which makes drafting him very interesting, but even if it doesn't happen, he's still going to be solid. So at his current ADP, 
I think he's a pretty big sleeper. The next sleeper on this list is Pavel Buchnevich of the St. Louis Blues. Digging through Buchnevich's advanced stats made me realize that I should have put him in my bounce back video. Last season was the lowest shooting percentage for Buchnevich since the 2019-2020 season, and you could also see that his honest shooting percentage was down compared to the previous three years, and so were his 5v5 IPP and his power play IPP as well. Buchnevich has been an over point per game player in two of the last three seasons, and yet his ADP on Yahoo is 152.1. I think this is pretty crazy value for a guy that also has dual eligibility as well. So yeah, I'm a fan of drafting Buchnevich. Like I mentioned, Buchnevich has been a consistent over point per game player on the Blues. And you could see that in 21-22, he was on pace for 85 points. And in 22-23, he was on pace for 87. I'm not sure if he's going to be an over point per game player once again, but the fact is the potential is there. And if you're looking at the minutes that he played last year, he spent the majority of the time playing with an elite playmaker in Robert Thomas. We can also see that the Bucinavich, Thomas, and Kyrie line was the most played line last year. So there's a good chance that in a lot of games, that is a line that they're running. In conclusion, guys, a player that could potentially put up 80 plus points shouldn't be going this late. So I think Bucinavich is a massive sleeper. The next player I want to talk about is Martin Natchez of the Carolina Hurricanes. As you guys can see, last year, he only averaged 17 minutes and 21 seconds of ice time per game with only two minutes coming from the man advantage. The reason why Natchez didn't have a lot of power play time is because he was taken off the first unit and you could see that he only had 13 power play points last year compared to 26 the year prior. The good thing for Natchez though is that he's going to be back on this first unit. Gensel's not around, Bunting's not around, and Tara Vinan's not around either. I also want to mention that his advanced stats suggested me that he may have been getting unlucky last year. His shooting percentage was down, his honest shooting percentage was down, and so was his power play IPP. Now, I do want to say, yes, there are some concerns that he's probably playing on a line with Jesperi Kaki at Nemi, but there's a good chance that Svechikov is on that line with him, and there's also a chance that sometimes Natchez is going to play with Ajo. Nonetheless, he's going to be back on a power play that should be top 10 in the NHL, and there's also a chance we see a bump in even strength ice time as well, because the Hurricanes look pretty thin throughout their roster. Ultimately, I'm expecting Natchez to bounce back. He takes a lot of shots, which provides a safe floor in the peripheral department. He can score a lot of goals. He has center and right wing eligibility. And I think he's going to be a pretty good value in your upcoming drafts. The next sleeper we have to talk about is Alex Tuck of the Buffalo Sabres. This one is pretty obvious, guys. Tuck, he was a beast two years ago. Last season was a disastrous season for the Sabres. And I think as a whole, the Sabres are going to bounce back. Like I mentioned with Cousins, the Sabres went from the ninth best power play in 22-23 to the fourth worst in 23-24. So even if we just find a middle ground here, Tuck should improve upon his production from last season. Despite only scoring two power play goals and having a total of 11 power play points, he still pays for 65 points last season. So yes, I think there's a strong chance that he puts up 70 plus points for this upcoming year. In conclusion, guys, the Sabres have a new coaching staff, which should help the team and their power play. They have a lot of young players that could break out and Tuck is stapled to Thompson, even strength and on the man advantage. One thing I wanted to edit in here is that Alex Tuck has right wing eligibility. Right wing is a scarce position in a lot of leagues. So that's another reason why you should draft Alex Tuck. Next up, we have to talk about one of my favorite sleepers. And that player is Brian Rust of the Pittsburgh Penguins. An easy way to understand why Rust is such a big sleeper is by looking at his production in the last five seasons. In the 2019-2020 season, he was on pace for 83 points. In 2021, he was on pace for 61 points. In 21-22, he was on pace for 79 points. In 22-23, he was on pace for 46 points. And in 23-24, last season, he was on pace for 74 points. The fact is that other than the 22-23 season, Russ has been absolutely elite. Yes, that season two years ago was a down year for Rust. He was taken off a first line power play in favor of Ricard Raquel. And at times, he wasn't playing with Crosby, even strength. The good thing for Russ, though, is that last season, he bounced back. He got put back on the first line power play ahead of Raquel, and he got back playing with Crosby even strength, as you guys can see with the minutes of the lines. With that being said, I'm expecting him to still be on the first line in the first power play unit for this upcoming season, getting elite deployment. I also want to mention that the Penguins had the third worst power play in the NHL last season, so the fact that Russ pays for 74 points is very impressive. There's a chance with Eric Carlson getting acclimated to this offense, having a year under his belt, and also them hiring a new assistant coach who's going to be in charge of special teams, that this power play could improve. Ultimately, there's a better chance this power play improves than gets worse, so in the end, that's going to help Brian Rust. The last thing I want to mention about Rust, as you guys can see on the screen here, is that he takes a lot of shots and he puts up a lot of hits as well. If you're in a league that values any one of those, he is going to have an edge against some others. So that's another thing to like about Brian Rust. In conclusion, guys, as you guys can see on Yahoo, his ADP is 149.3. And he's also a right wing player, which is a scarce position. So this is very good value. And I think he is going to be a massive sleeper 
in your upcoming drafts. Next up, we have to talk about a guy whose ADP is way too low on Yahoo and might be the biggest steal on that platform. That player is Gabriel Velarde of the Winnipeg Jets. As you guys can see here, Velarde's ADP is 174. This is crazy, guys. Velarde was a beast last season, and his deployment is really good. Last season, Velarde had 22 goals and a total of 36 points in 47 games. This was an 82-game pace of 38 goals. Again, I'll repeat it. He was on pace for 38 goals last year, and his ADP on Yahoo was 174. Could we see a little bit of regression in the goal scoring and on the power play? Yes. That's certainly a possibility, but I still think that there's a strong chance that he scores 30 plus goals. Last season, he was a staple on the first line, even strength, as you guys can see with the minutes right here. I also have to mention that Velarde was a staple on the first line power play as well. He's perfect as the net front player. He's a big guy and he is going to stick there for this upcoming season. Velarde is only 25 years old, so there's a chance we haven't even seen the best of him. And you could see that in 22-23 on the Kings, he put up very similar numbers as well. On the Kings, he had 23 goals in 63 games, despite not being on the first line power play and only averaging 15 minutes and 36 seconds of ice time per game. My point is that last season was not a fluke for Velarde. This guy is legit. And I expect him to have a really strong season as long as he can stay healthy. In conclusion, guys, Velarde might be the best value on Yahoo, so make sure you target him in your later rounds. The number one sleeper forward on this list is none other than Dylan Gunther of the Utah Hockey Club. Last year in his sophomore season, Gunther had a fantastic campaign. He had 18 goals and a total of 35 points in 45 games. Gunther's call-up was only supposed to be short-term because of a Jason Zucker injury. They made it clear that this was only going to be for a couple of games, but things changed very quickly. The fact is that Gunther was so good that they had no choice but to keep him up with the team, and he definitely excelled. Like I mentioned, he had 35 points in 45 games. That's an 82 game pace of 32 goals and 63 points. This production was very solid and it's even more solid considering he only averaged 16 minutes and 17 seconds of ice time per game. You might think that with Gunther playing so well last season, his ADP would be pretty high on Yahoo, correct? No, you would be incorrect. His ADP on Yahoo currently is 177. Gunther is practically going undrafted on Yahoo right now. And if you're playing with casual league mates, you can get a massive steal if you target him in your later rounds. This guy is only 21 years old, playing in the top six on a rising team, and he is a staple on the first line power play, a power play that was top 15 in the NHL last season. There is massive upside with Gunther, and in my opinion, he is a future 40 goal scorer. I'm not saying it's going to happen this season, guys, but if you've watched him play, you can see that his shot is absolutely wicked. He has the nastiest release, guys. It's extremely powerful. It's extremely fast. And I think he has the ability to score 30 plus goals for this upcoming year. With all this being said, guys, I have a strong conviction when it comes to Dylan Gunther. And I think in all likelihood, he scores 30 plus goals a season and 60 plus points. There's also a potential that he could put up 70 plus points as well, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to put too much expectations on a 21 year old, but there is legit opportunity for him to do this. So yeah, at his ADP, he might be the biggest steal in fantasy hockey. There's two things I wanted to edit in here, guys, with Gunther. One of them being the amount of shots that he puts up. Like I mentioned in my most recent video, shots can matter quite a bit. And last season, despite only averaging 16 minutes and 17 seconds of ice time per game, he was on pace for 220 shots. If we see a little bump in ice time here, we could potentially see Gunther put up 250 plus shots. And that's going to give him an edge against a lot of other players in fantasy hockey. I wanted to mention that, but I also wanted to mention that Gunther has right wing eligibility. Right wing is a scarce position in a lot of leagues. So that's also going to give Gunther a massive edge. That's it for the official list of forwards. And before we talk about defense, Defensemen, I wanted to highlight three centers that are going far too late on Yahoo. These three players are Bo Horvat, Brock Nelson, and Nazem Kadri. As you guys can see, Bo Horvat's ADP is 149.7, Nazem Kadri's ADP is 158.1, and Brock Nelson's ADP is 160.8. These guys are going far too late than they should, but the reason they're going this late is because they only have center eligibility. Players with dual eligibility and wingers have much more value than centers because center is way more deep. This is the reason that wieners go way earlier than centers and why you can find so much good value in your later rounds. This is why I'm a huge advocate of fading centers early, grabbing those elite wieners, and then waiting till the end of your draft to grab players like Nazem Kadri, Bo Horvat, or Brock Nelson. This ensures that in your later rounds, you don't have to scramble to find value on the wing. No, you can have those elite wieners early and grab these elite centers later. Also guys, I wanted to add one center here that center being Evgeny Malkin. Listen, I understand that Malkin is 38 years old and that he's slowly fading, but he's still in the top six and on the first line power play. Last season, despite the Penguins having the third worst power play in the NHL, Malkin still put up 27 goals and a total of 67 points in 82 games. Only 18 of these points came from the man advantage, which was the lowest power play point pace of Malkin's career. 
With that being said, guys, Malkin's ADP on Yahoo is 173.4. If you want to follow the strategy of fading centers early and getting these late value steals in your later rounds, Malkin is certainly a good choice. In conclusion, guys, I'll talk about this strategy more in another video. But if you decide to fade centers in your early rounds, definitely target these guys in your later rounds. Those were the forwards I wanted to talk about, but now I want to talk about some defensemen. The ADP can be pretty messed up on Yahoo, so it's hard to categorize certain players as sleepers, but there's a couple of guys that are going super late that could end up providing a lot of value. With that being said, the first defenseman I want to talk about is Mike Matheson of the Montreal Canadiens. I don't think Matheson is necessarily a sleeper, but I think in a lot of situations, he may go later than he should because some people are worried that Hudson is going to take over that power play spot. I've already stated my opinion on this before, but I don't think Matheson is going to be taken off the first unit for a rookie. I think the only way that it would happen is if Matheson was injured or he got traded because yes, there is a possibility that they trade him at his peak. The fact is that if Matheson is on this first line power play for the majority of the season or the entire season, he is going to rack up a lot of points and you may get him cheaper than he should go. So I would say target him in your upcoming drafts. The next defenseman I want to talk about may be a little bit controversial and that defenseman is Thomas Shabbat. Listen, I want to say right off the bat that yes, there is a good chance that Sanderson is still on this first unit. There's untapped potential with Sanderson he has looked pretty good. I understand this, but we do have to address that there is the potential that Shabbat gets put back on there. The Senators use Sanderson in a lot of situations, especially on the penalty kill, so they may want to reduce his power play time and increase his 5v5 usage. I also want to mention that Shabbat told reporters recently that he was dealing with a wrist issue for the last two seasons, and this summer, he got it fixed. There's a chance that this wrist issue may have been holding him back, and that's why we've seen him struggle a little bit, so if that is the case, there could be upside here. I also want to mention that Sanderson's power play metrics are not the best, and Shabbat in 22-23 looks really good on that power play. Sanderson is so young, so we don't exactly know his upside, but there's definitely an argument to make that Shabbat is a better offensive defenseman. Now, regardless of my personal opinion on this, we have to talk about the fact that Sanderson is probably going to go way earlier than Shabbat in your upcoming drafts. Shabbat's ADP on Yahoo is 162.4, and I think because people think Sanderson is going to have this fantastic season, that you're going to be able to get him pretty much in the last round of your draft. I'm not guaranteeing to you guys that he gets back on the first unit or that he's going to have a really good season, but he's definitely worth taking a late round flyer on in case he does. I also want to mention that Shabbat's peripherals are very solid. If he plays an 82 game season, there's a chance he could put up 225 shots, 150 blocks, and 100 plus hits. This is going to give him a big advantage in category leagues and points leagues that heavily value those peripherals. So that's something to keep in mind. In the end, guys, I think Shabbat just has a lot of value at his current ADP. You're not risking a lot in drafting him. And if he doesn't pan out, you can just drop him. The next two defensemen I want to talk about here are two defensemen that I've talked about a lot in my previous video. So I won't make this too long, but those two defensemen are Adam Boquist of the Florida Panthers and Jake Wallman of the San Jose Sharks. These are defensemen that are currently going undrafted on Yahoo, so there's pretty much no risk in taking them as a late round flyer. The reason I like both of these players is because there is upside with them potentially going on the first power play unit. I like Boquist because I do think he has a good shot to get on the first unit on the Panthers, and that would obviously mean a ton of upside. He's very young, he's shown a lot of offensive promise, and obviously the sky's the limit if he ended up on that power play. With Jake Wallman, who's on the Sharks, I think it's a more safer pick if you're going to take a late round flyer on somebody just because I think regardless if he's on the first power play unit or not, he is going to get an increase in deployment going from the Red Wings to the Sharks. Wallman's also a guy that puts up a lot of blocks. His shots are good as well. So he has that safe floor baked in and I think he's going to be good regardless if he gets major power play time or not. In conclusion, both of these guys are going undrafted. Boquist has a ton of upside. Wallman is just a really safe and smart pick and you're basically drafting them for free. So why not take them as a late round flyer? Now is the time to talk about my favorite sleeper going into this fantasy hockey season. And that guy is Seth Jones of the Chicago Blackhawks. My reasoning is very simple, guys guys. He's a guy that gets a lot of ice time, even strength and on the man advantage. He is going to play on a power play with Connor Bedard, who I think is due to have a big season. And he is a guy that puts up monster peripherals. Last season, he was eighth in shots per game and 28th in shots, hits and blocks combined among defensemen. This gives him a massive edge in a lot of leagues. I also want to mention that his IPP, even strength and on the man advantage were much lower than they were in the last three seasons. So there is a chance that he was getting unlucky. I do want to say that last season, Seth Jones wasn't the best. He had eight goals in 67 games, which is good, but 
31 points in 67 games is not his best work. The thing is though, that last season, the Chicago Blackhawks roster was absolutely terrible. Bedard was a rookie and he was surrounded by third and fourth liners and that definitely impacted Jones. The good thing is that the Blackhawks made some upgrades this off season, adding Tavo Teravine and Tyler Bertuzzi. And they're also gonna get Taylor Hall back from injury. There's also a chance that Bedard has a massive season as well. And that's absolutely gonna help set Jones production. Ultimately, you're gonna see even strength improvements for the Blackhawks. You're gonna see the power play improve. And Seth Jones has elite deployment on this team. So I'm expecting him to put up 10 plus goals and 45 plus points. There's also an upside case where he puts up 50 to 60 points as well. So I am a huge fan of Seth Jones for this upcoming year. Look at his ADP as well. It is 153 on Yahoo. That is way too low, guys. If this continues to stay the same, he may go super late in your drafts and you got yourself a massive steal. The last thing I want to quickly show you guys is sleepers that are currently going undrafted on Yahoo. These aren't guys that are necessarily going to have a monster season, but in a lot of deeper leagues, they are steals and they could be good late round players. The first player is Kro Marchenko. He's on the first line and the first power play unit on the jackets. He takes a lot of shots. He's a goal scorer, young player with upside. I definitely like him as a late round flyer. You also have Leo Carlson, a lot of potential upside with him. He's going undrafted. Other players here include Josh Norris of the Ottawa Senators. There is some risk, guys, because I think this might be his second or third shoulder surgery, but the fact is that when he is healthy, he's pretty good. There's a chance he's in the top six and on the first line power play. He puts up good shots and hits, and he should not be going undrafted. The next player is Barrett Hayden of the Utah Hockey Club. Yes, he was terrible last year. Yes, there's a chance he's not on the first line with Keller later on in the season, but there's also a chance that he is on the first line with Keller and Smaltz, a line that was really good in 22-23, and there is a chance that he is that net front player on the first power play unit. Another player going undrafted is Matty Beneers, which makes no sense to me. Yes, he had a sophomore slump, but he's still first line, first line power play on the Kraken. And I think he's going to bounce back. The only thing I want to mention though, is like some of these other guys, Josh Norris, Barrett Hayden, Morgan Frost, he only has center eligibility. So that's probably why he's going so late. I do also want to say that he doesn't put up good shots, heads and blocks either. So he could be at a big disadvantage depending on your league. The other players on here are Morgan Frost, he could potentially be on the first line and the first line power play, maybe playing with Mave Michkov. So some potential upside there. The only bad thing about Frost is he doesn't put up a lot of shots at some blocks. So that could put him at a disadvantage. Then after that, you have Fabian Zetterlund. He's only good in leagues that heavily value shots, hits, and blocks because I'm not expecting him to have a monster season in any other type of league. But yeah, he puts up amazing shots, hits, and blocks for a forward. So take that into consideration. We have three players left to talk about. Two of them are deep league flyers. Those guys being Brant Clark of the Los Angeles Kings and Jack Quinn of the Buffalo Sabres. Clark led all AHL defensemen in points per game. He profiles as a very good offensive prospect. And there is a chance that later on in the season, he could get put on the first unit. Ultimately, I don't think that's going to happen with Doughty still there, but he could be worth it in a deeper league. In terms of Jack Quinn, this is also an upside play. I do think Cousins is going to be in that bumper role, but it could potentially be Jack Quinn. And he has shown a lot of promise in the NHL games that he's played so far. Even if he's not on the first line power play, there is a chance he can score 25 plus goals because this guy is a goal scorer. He's a very good sniper. So yeah, I think he could be a sleeper and a really good late round flyer. Now the last player is a deeper league play. This is a very deep league play if you're in like a 16 team league or more. And that play is Victor Olofsson of the Vegas Golden Knights. I think Olofsson should have been in my bounce back player video because there is a strong case for him to bounce back. And now going to Vegas there's a chance he's on the first line with Jack Eichel. We saw those guys play together way back when in Buffalo. And when Olsen actually gets good minutes, he produces at an elite level. I don't know if he's going to be on the first line power play. I would assume probably not. But still, guys, getting top six minutes could be a big boost for his fantasy value. And in some deeper leagues, he could be really good. We have two extra players I wanted to quickly shout out here. Those players being Tom Wilson of the Washington Capitals and Boone Jenner of the Columbus Blue Jackets. The reason I wanted to bring up these two guys is because they put up amazing peripherals. If you're in a category league or a points league that counts hits, they are going to have a massive edge against a lot of players. If you're playing with some casual fantasy hockey players, they may not realize how good these guys are in the hit department and you can get them as steals. I also want to say that there's a good chance that both of them are on the first power play unit on their respective teams. So they're going to put up some solid points as well. With that being said, guys, target these players if you're in those type of leagues. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. Please hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Helps out so much. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. And I will catch you in the next one.